Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so let's for tonight imagine that we're outside together, kind of like on this picture in Italy, maybe in sunny afternoon. And um, we're here to listen to the tales of two farmers in Italy. And Farmer's Tales is exactly as it sounds like. It's just, it's a series that we do once in a while where we just invite a farmer to come and tell their tale about how, what kind of farm they have, why they're a farmer, but in a quite um, informal way so that people, and also with a lot of people, time for people to ask questions and to engage in a conversation with the farmer, because we think it's very important to get to know the farmers. Um, and yeah, it's too bad that we cannot be together in, in a circle like the one on this picture, but on the other hand, um, the fact that we have to do everything online now also makes it more easy for us to invite farmers from other countries, so that's kind of a, a benefit in it. Um, yeah, and tonight we have two very interesting CSAs to talk about. Um, the first one is uh, the CSA Arvaya with Maria Sole. Um, it's one of the oldest and biggest CSAs in Italy, and it's in Bologna. Um, and this CSA was inspiration for a lot of newer CSAs to kind of develop. And one of them was also the CSA Rio Selva, from which Francesco, Francesco Nodio is farmer or, or apprentice. Um, and he's also involved in a lot of the national movements, such as the eco-village movements. So that's interesting to hear how he also combines um, this. Yeah, and so tonight, now we have the general introduction. I'm not sure if uh, Francesco is already here. I guess not, he had some internet problems. Um, but yeah, we will see then. Um, if he is not here within maybe two minutes, then we can probably immediately go to Maria Sori, who is going to give a small presentation about the CSA where she works um, and, how, and how the community building there works. Um, she will talk for about 20 minutes, and then after that we have some time for uh, quite specific questions, so more if you have like um, things that you didn't understand or specific questions about this CSA, then ask them then, please. And you can always ask questions in the chat and then we will ask them or you can, um, after Maria is done talking, raise your hand and ask your question. Um, then after Francesco will talk also for 20 minutes, then we have again a couple of minutes for specific questions. And then um, at the end, we have more time for, for bigger discussion questions. So if you have like more deeper questions and keep them for then or put them in the chat and then we will ask them. Um, so also questions that you can, that you want to ask to both, both farmers are very welcome then. Um, yeah, I hope everything is clear. Um, let's see. Julia, did you hear anything from uh, Francesco? He's not here right yet, or is he? No, he's still having trouble with the connection. So I guess we can start with uh, Maria Sole. I he said it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um. Yeah, Maria, then the floor is all for you. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, guys. Hi. I'm very happy to be here tonight. And thank you, Julia and Louis and all the association for inviting me because uh, it's always cool to share and to spread our experience, like in Europe at least. We'll see. Um, I'm happy even to see some of their friends. Uh, like Leonie and some other students, which I've been working with them like for a couple of months. So um, here, uh, I'll start and I'll share with you our experience. I have a um, kind of issue because I forgot my... Uh, Maria? Um, yeah? Francesco is here now, so I'm not sure... Uh... 
Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you just fine. But Francesco just entered, so maybe hmm. he can give <laughs> the small introduction anyway, if that's okay. Because he's just going, he was going to start with two minutes uh, about the Italian context and then. It's just fine. Is it? <laughs> Sorry for the confusion. Um, let's see if he's actually here. It's uh, it still says joining, so uh, okay. he's entering the meeting. Yeah, he's here. Francesco. Let's see. Let's see if his internet is working. Okay, or well maybe we can just go ahead now. Uh, what do you think? Well, Francesco, could you um, put something in the chat box uh, to let us know if you're uh, uh, present? Okay. Oh, there we go. I see Francesco. I see him waving. Okay, I, I'm very sorry for the late. I had uh, my computer crashed, so I had to oh. open it uh, and then to wait for Zoom uh, to all do all these things, and uh, and then I'm here. I'm very very sorry for the late. No problem. Um, I just shared a program for this meeting, and I said something about Boerengroep. So if you're ready, you can now give like the short. Uh, Introduction to the context. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? You can go. Okay, I can go. Can I go? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, can I share the screen or? Yeah. Normally you can. I already can. Okay. I have to figure out how. <laughs> it's at the bottom, the green. Ah, okay. Sure. Thing. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, do you see something? No? One moment. Okay. Yeah, now we do. Okay, okay. Now I'm here. Okay, uh, now I will do a small, small presentation of, uh, of a little bit of Italian context about, uh, about uh, community supported agriculture um, projects. Okay. And um, you, you, you can see my, my computer is quite slow. So, okay, okay. Um, my speech starts from the crisis of 2008 uh with the economic recession which uh, italy never recovered of that and so that's kind of really really changing uh, the idea for example young people still can't buy organic products here because they can't afford them most of them and uh, this uh, it's a kind of very very different situation and uh, also uh, another important thing is that uh, organic uh, organic uh, production coming into supermarket and uh, and then in that created a little problem for um, a big problem for all the previous producers because previous producers was kind of uh, artisanal produce production was kind of really really kind of handmade production small one etc so uh, for the consumer the supermarket it's uh, they, they can't see the difference so they, they lost the, their market and then before they they have it it's good that in supermarket there is organic but it's this kind of bad effects also uh, so uh, organic producers, uh, first organic producers are not uh, are not um, in a, in a good period now, and um, also there is not so much help for uh, for this kind of production from the government, from uh, the the uh, the regions, etc. For example, this is Veneto region. The governor of Veneto, Luca Zaya, you can see uh, him. Uh, and uh, in the bottom of the page, uh, he did a law about Prosecco and uh, um, because it's very special product, uh, but it's a product that should be on the hill because then uh, insects uh, and other parasites can't go there because they're up and, and not in, uh, 
uh, and not in the valley. Uh, but he said you can do with whatever. So they are using a lot, a lot of pesticides more uh, to to do this kind of production. Very because it's very weak uh, um, in the valley. So, so for example, that's the politics. It's uh, it's more into into um, into very polluted situation, etc. And uh, okay, now uh, there is this uh, this kind of people in Italy that is called neurorally, uh, neurorals, uh, and it's people who studied other things at the other past or um, didn't study the agriculture and uh, and then and then go uh, in agriculture. And this is kind of very particular, and uh, that's a very nice picture here. That um, looks like uh, very, very fancy, uh, very nice things to do, etc. The reality is that uh, in Italy, this kind of uh, young people, uh, the people is not already closed. Uh, it's uh, working a lot. It's self-exploiting a lot. It's uh, working uh, something like uh, from six to seven days a week and uh, from nine to 10 hours a day and even more. And they're running, running, running and, uh, and just, just to, to, to make it in the balance. So there it's, it's hard to, to make a living about that. Thank you. Is that a... Francesco? Ah, I think his connection just dropped. Okay. <laughs> hmm, that's too bad. I feel like it was just in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> um, I think we should. Uh, yeah, I think proceed. we should go on. So, um, okay. Yeah. At least it was a little bit of an introduction to the context of Italy, I think, and I'm sure that Maria can also say more um, about it. So, okay, this time I will not interrupt you again, Maria, so... <laughs> okay, no worries. I'm sorry for Francesco, but okay, we will we yeah. continue later. Yeah, um, exactly. Okay, I'll share my video, my screen, so you can see the PowerPoint presentation I prepared for you. So it will be easy to imagine to be in Italy at least with some picture. <laughs> okay, and see? Okay, do you guys see it? Okay. Yes. Super cool. Okay, let's see here. Um, I didn't introduce myself yet, but okay, of course. My name is uh, Maria Sole, and I've been working for uh, Arvaya for the last two years. I'm a sociologist, and uh, I take care for Arvaya of communication and some project management. So I'm not yet a farmer, but I'm on the way. And uh, okay, tonight I'll share with you some like of the main core things about Arvaya that I think that are maybe interesting for you. And uh, I'll start talking about who we are and uh, our, our like short story. And we will go through our organizational chart and then to, we will see like uh, how do we uh, practice a uh, solidarity mechanism to help people to attend and uh, participate to this community supported agriculture so uh, arvaya has maybe you know uh, is the first italian experience of farmers consumers and citizen cooperative in italy it started in 2013, inspired by uh, other C, uh, CSA's uh, experience around Europe, especially Gartenkopf in Germany, and another one in Switzerland. Arvaya is a community-based organization uh, located in Bologna, in uh, the Emilia-Romagna region, 
uh, in the north of Italy. Um, like um, the municipality of Bologna wanted to give value uh, to an area of farming and nature, which is called uh, uh, City Countryside Park, uh, which is a big park uh, just outside the city of Bologna. It's like seven kilometers from the city center. Maybe, as you know, the city center in Italy is where the bigger, the bigger church is, so it's not very far. Um, and uh, it's, uh, we are in a park of 47 hectares that had been cultivated with conventional agriculture for many years until uh, 2010. The municipality was uh, trying to stimulate somehow the development of a project on social farming on this area. So uh, in the early 2013, a group of people from Bologna, some of them with farming backgrounds, some without, started there uh, to get together and developed the idea of making or forming a community supported agriculture, which was something very new here. Um, they had clear in mind maybe just one thing because of course they were making up and trying to forming uh, the community but they really wanted to do this project on public land because they wanted to secure public land from future speculation of private people private interest. So they wanted, in the beginning, Arvaya started his um, experience with a very, very little um, like field, about three hectares uh, inside this park. And it was uh, sub-rented uh, from a cooperative that was using it, cultivating, and we started to cultivate uh, like uh, vegetables for uh, a very small group of people, like they were 50 up to 70 members so um, until we get to the 2015 and the municipality finally after 15 almost 15 years made a public call for uh, a long uh, um, like for hi can you hear me um, you fell away for seconds. Ah. Um, okay, um, I'll start back from 2015, maybe. You yeah. guys, did yeah. you hear me? Okay. No, uh, yeah. Okay, then in 2015, the municipality finally made a public call for a long-term assignment for the management of the whole area, which was uh, one by Arvaya and since then the cooperative has been uh, able to manage the wall 47 hectares of the park uh, integrating of course the vegetable production with cereals and legumes and aromatic herbs and fruits and uh, in the meantime we improved our farming farming techniques and uh, um, we improved our sustainable crop rotation. Mm, as you see from the slide, we of course, we dedicate to both agricultural land and public green areas that which are divided uh, in um, like 10 hectares are dedicated to vegetable, vegetables garden, including cereals for members. Uh, 13 are for fooder that we sell outside to other companies, as well as the 14 hectares of cereal. Uh, because, of course, in the beginning, we started just with three hectares. Uh, Maria? Actually enough, but now we have, for, we have to find like this one. And, Maria, you you're me? falling away uh, sometimes. So um, mm. mostly you're easy to understand, but sometimes you fall away. So maybe um, since I also have your PowerPoint, is it an idea that I share the PowerPoint and that you uh, talk? 
Would that be good? Okay, because I think that sometimes helps. And uh, okay, so tonight is a challenge for this presentation, right? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's almost uh, the end of the year, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So just tell me when I have to. Uh, yeah. You are in the right slide. Yeah, that's right. I want to share my video, so I won't drop again. Okay, so I'm sorry if I don't look you in your eyes, but that's no, Italian sick. internet, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was saying that uh, in the beginning we had like uh, just three hectares, but now we have uh, way too much. That's why we sell to other companies food and part of the cereal. And the last 10 hectares, we uh, manage the green area. You can skip to the next slide. And um, okay, here uh, it's how nowadays, um, how today uh, the, the community of, Ar of Arvaya is made like we have uh, mm, almost 500 members um, eight of them are employees uh, like paid working members five of them are mostly farmer and three of us take care of communication administration and delivery uh, 230 are active uh, members like let's say those one that support, uh, like financially support the uh, production. And uh, 54 of them are supporters, just like they, they lend somehow um, money to the cooperative. So we do not have to ask for loans to banks. Uh, so they support us when we have to buy something. Um, today, um, uh, and we have uh, 14 other association and cooperative um, that support us. Uh, Arvaya uh, nowadays supplies more than 200 families with fresh and seasonal uh, organic, of course, vegetables the, that we deliver to the city every week. And we will see later how do we organize the, the delivery and our hubs. Um, if you skip to the next um, slide, maybe we can see that um, something which is really interesting because most of our members are female and they, they are from 31 to 50 years, which uh, it's, I mean, in Italy, uh, I think that this data, it's because uh, most of people under 30, uh, they, continue to, they continue to change their city and maybe their jobs, their work. So it's easily for them to move. Uh, and so that's why they don't put themselves in such a, um, such a project. But those one up uh, to 90, uh, they actually are those one that supports mainly our project. And next slide, we see the trend, I think, of the members since we, we started our project. So in 2014, you, 14, you see the orange bar. We started with uh, 150 members. Uh, and nowadays, we are almost 500. The blue bars uh, are the numbers of people, of members that support, actually, they, they finance financially supports the production. Go ahead. Here I, I, I share with you some, some like the production of the last year about cereals, vegetables, fruit and legumes. And of course, vegetables are the main part. It's our core business, we can say. And next uh, slide. And here is how we use our cereal. I didn't even translate it, but 
I think you can even, like maybe figure out what they mean. Uh, so we have uh, flower and seeds. Uh, we have 17 um, examples of it uh, with, um, with part of the bread, uh, with part of the flower, we make our own bread. Uh, some other, of course, as uh, Italian, we do like 23 kind of pasta because it's never enough. And uh, we make some tomato sauce. Uh, and of course, we have four kind of legumes. So we made this uh, average, average count of how much uh, um, every member eats of this uh, product. And there are like 26 kilograms each one. But it's not like the, 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 the part that we consume ourselves is the it's very low because if you see uh, much of the part is uh, sold to other to other company. Next. OK, so now it comes the, the, the funny part, like how are we organized? I'll try to make it easy, but uh, um, you have to know the community forms as a collective who uh, is directly involved in decision making on the land through collective participation strategy. Members self-manage the organization. And so uh, since the beginning, we uh, dis designed an organizational chart, that, which is the one that you're looking to, uh, so that we have defined different groups with their duties, action, responsibility, and how each group related, related and connected to each other. This was Mm, mainly like useful in everyday activities because especially when we had to take the decision about how to do something and uh, then to define the process of decision making and different level of it. So as you can see, there are different groups. Part of them are operational and some other are decision making group. So on the left side of the slide, you see their shareholders meeting, uh, which is the, the, the most important group because all the 500 members uh, are in it and we meet twice for a year and we check how the cooperative is going, share, we share results, economical and social uh, reports and results. We ask questions, we talk a lot, we make suggestions and proposals, and of course, we take the decision. So this is the most important and powerful group because it represents the will of all members. Um, all uh, together, like this group, every three years elects the boards of directors, which is the BOD group that you see, the green one, um, that we actually, we have to have it because as a cooperative, we have formally, uh, we formally need to have this like legal uh, president and vice president and some advisor. And they are formally, um, they, they like they formally should take the decision for the cooperative, but they actually don't do it, it alone, but uh, with the bigger group, which is called the strategic group, which is the gray one. So in the boards of the uh, board of directors, you have, we have an, uh, like uh, elected last year, uh, five people. And every three years or six, we try to uh, change all of them. So we can give new inputs and, and like power to the group. Then you have the other groups. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, the strategic group, it's a group of volunteer members um, and uh, represented and they, they have, and they, it is, um, uh, and the representative member of each operation, uh, operational group are in this strategic group. 
um, this group takes decision together about the strategic issue of the cooperative, like, I don't know, now we are dealing with the high rent that we have to pay to the municipality. So we're trying to negotiate it. And so we are trying to figure out how to do this together. And uh, uh, it depends on the topic or the issue, but somehow, sometimes we go back to the shareholder meetings to make a, uh, to, to make a decision all together, or sometimes we go directly to like vote if we are uh, on something or not. The operational group focuses the other one, the right, the, the one on the right, uh, like the agri-green administration and organization distribution, uh, CEE, which is not uh, um, the Europe, European group, um, like take care of, uh, uh, I don't know, focuses on specific area like agri and um, group deals with problem and choices related to farming. Green group about green areas with trees and bushes and everything thing uh, that does not concern farming and uh, as well as uh, the other group so CEE it's communication education and events and distribution as maybe you can under, like figure out is uh, imagine is about how do we deliver our our products to the members and if you go to the next slide maybe we can okay keep going okay, I, I didn't tell you something important that uh, in this operational group uh, there are paid members as uh, employees as me and some other uh, some other volunteers so we meet twice or once a month and of course we we set an agenda and we decide together how to do things and what to do um, every group writes a minute uh, of the meeting, so we can upload it on a database that we share with all the members, so can be read can be read on uh, from everyone. Uh, here is the work that um, we try to count our our um, our hours. Uh, so how how much we work is not easy because you know agricultural projects sometimes are like you, you should work 24/7. Uh, but uh, we try to balance the paid work and the not paid one. So the 35%, uh, the green one, is paid to employees. And the 30% it's work done by ourselves, but it's not paid. The 20% it's made of uh, work of our members, volunteer members. And the other 5% it's the work of like student work that come here for internship. So um, I, I wanted to point this out because when we talk about this project, sometimes we forget how human resources are important and the sustainability of projects uh, has to focus on this, uh, on this issue because sometimes uh, um, it can be tough, but it's something that we have to, to face up. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, we see, ah, okay, this is how um, members, volunteer members um, participate to our VIA activities. So they join, of course, shareholders meeting, they come, uh, they manage delivery hubs, uh, become active member in the group. If you go to the next one, uh, you'll see that uh, someone, uh, it, we try to invite them uh, to all the parties that we make, at least uh, um, when we will start again, maybe next year, we hope so, uh, and to all the activities that we can do together. So they, the, all the members doing, by doing things, they can be aware of what's going on in the cooperative. If you please go to the next slide. Okay, so as I told you, the shareholders annual meeting comes twice a, twice a year. 
um, the key word of this meeting is solidarity. Uh, I wanted to share with you, I want to share with you how we uh, make, like how we count, how, how we um, uh, define the annual fee. Uh, that every member has to pay. If you go to the next slide, we, you'll see that we get the budget, the total budget uh, that considers, of course, salary, rents, the bills, everything that we need to have to support uh, the production. And we divide it for the number of members that uh, will uh, um, support the production. And the result is the average fee, of course, in euros that uh, we ask to each one. Um, like last year, no, this year it was 850 euros for 52 weeks of production, so almost a an year. And but like the solidarity mechanism uh, is uh, it works. Um, in a very cool way, I think, because uh, we don't see, at least in Italy, this kind of solution. Uh, because if you go to the next slide, we can see that how, how does it work? It works like a, a, an um, auction. Is it called like this in English? OK. Um, so uh, we ask, uh, after, after we say the, the, the average fee that we suggest, we ask everyone to make their own anonymous offer. And they put this offer in the box. Uh, and of course, the offer can be lower or higher than the suggested average fee. And we count after, after that, we start to count of the, all the offers that we have. Uh, we usually do like uh, two turns because in the first, uh, you know, people try to get a low offer, uh, at least they try to. And then when we count, we say, okay, we need, I don't know, 20,000 euros more or 2,000, it depends on the offers. But um, yeah, actually at the second turn, we get to, the, to, to, reach, the, to reach the budget. So this kind of, uh, if, you, if, you, if you go to skip to the next, um, we, um, of course, we try to find a solution, uh, a solution that can be uh, from all the group, from, from the community for personal and economical issue and needs that everyone has. Like uh, something important is that uh, uh, because it's up on everyone, we do not ask for any paychecks or we cannot or, or to prove what they really need uh, why they made that why they made that offer we trust people because of course we are a community and we see that this works like last year, the lower, uh, the lowest offer was 300, almost 400 euros. And the highest one was almost 500. So it's something that actually helps the community and uh, reinforce the solidarity within members. If you go to the next um, slide, if you skip to the next slide, Slide, yeah. Um, I thought that maybe I don't know how uh, other experience and project that you know, uh, how do they deliver and distribute uh, their products. But here in uh, Arvaya, we tried to uh, open like some hubs in the city because we are the green dot on the left side. So we are kind of far away from the city. Uh, so to, to reduce the footprint of our uh, production, we decided to open other hubs. And of course, because we uh, didn't want to spend much money and because it's something that can be done by relations and knowledge is around other people, we just present our project to people that like to owners of stores, libraries, bookshops, all kinds of like spaces. 
and they they um, they borrow us somehow a little piece of their stores so um, twice a week we deliver there uh, some uh, like the boxes with the with the crate of our vegetables where uh, our my members can go to pick up their vegetables if you go to the next slide, I ask the members to take picture of uh, how it works, how it looks like. Um, so here we have uh, the co-housing uh, project of Bologna that hosts us every week, uh, a bookshop or a bar, a library. And the, I wrote like the keyboard here are trust and attention. Trust because uh, members when go to pick up their vegetables, they actually self-manage it. So you see, you have the crate there, and they pick, uh, and there is um, uh, there is a table, and there is a list with all kind of vegetables. So they just uh, uh, pick it up, and they have, of course, to uh, sign that they had. Uh, uh, so that's how it works. So if everyone does uh, pay attention to what is picking up, uh, of course, uh, everyone will find uh, their, their, own veg their own vegetables. And the next slide, you see maybe some other, uh, yeah, the, another, um, another hub that we have, which is a, a lab of arts and handcraft in Bologna. And all the members come with their own uh, bags and crates, so we do not produce plastic. And the others, in the next slide, you'll see the Arvaya headquarters, let's say, uh, where you can, where most of our members come to, to, to get their products. I am very sorry to tell you that my battery is low and maybe I'll drop like in two minutes, but I'll try to, to come back <laughs> somehow. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, is this the end of your presentation or not? Yeah, this is the end. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. If we have still two minutes, then maybe if someone has a very urgent question. Yeah, until I don't drop, I'm here. <laughs> Does anyone have a, a specific question about the CSA? I feel like we, Maria touched on a lot of different subjects, also some of which are kind of coming up here in the, in the Netherlands, which is really interesting to see mm -hmm. how, how you've already you're already doing it. Um, I don't see any questions yet in the chat. Uh, I'd have one question. Uh, maybe I missed it during the presentation, but I was wondering what is the difference between non-paid members and the volunteers? What's the difference between the, um, which kind of members? Uh, the non-paid participants uh, ah, in terms okay. of yeah yeah it's just uh, because we are an agricultural cooperative we uh, ask to shareholders to be members uh, paying a, a fee let's see yeah let's say a fee so um, so like a membership fee let's say so you can just support the projects and say, okay, I like it, but I don't know, I live somewhere else, I can't, I'm not vegetarian, I don't like vegetables, but I think that's a great idea to, to support. Uh, or on the other hand, you have active members that say, okay, I'm a member, so I get, I pay the membership fee um, and I support, I financially support the production. So there are two different like members. And of course, both can participate and be active uh, in groups or, or, or um, operational groups or strategy, but it's something that we have to consider as different because uh, we do not count them, the, um, those ones that are just member, you know, for the production, because it's a different count. 
Okay, great. Thank you for the explanation. Um, we have one more question, if your laptop still survives. Um, were some people having problems with the solidarity system? Um, and also, when and at how many shareholders did you start with this solidarity payment system? Okay, uh, no, until now, no, no one of our members had problems with the solidarity system because it's something actually that it's supposed to be useful. Um, and uh, uh, because we do not ask for, ask for um, like, um, why do they cannot uh, support like fully the the the, um, the fee? Uh, most of them actually they are pushed to participate even if they cannot somehow afford it. You know, so we try to get closer to everyone. At, at least we try to, and this is working. And um, when and how many shareholders did you start with? This well, um, I actually don't know when it was the first time that they made the auction, uh, but at, I think maybe 2014. I don't know if the first year they made it, but it always worked like it. Okay, thank you. That's nice to hear that it was uh, not much of a problem. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there are some more. Um, questions, but I think um, if Francesco's internet allows it, then we should first go to his presentation and then we can come back to uh, the questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Maria. It was it's super interesting and uh, yeah, I'd love to visit the CSA someday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, Francesco. How are you doing? Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I close the video so we don't risk much. Uh, <laughs> we had already yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I share the screen. Okay, perfect. And I go. Okay. 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 My first introduction was uh, was almost finished. Okay. Uh, there was just this last slide about gas. Gas are, sorry, are um, it's kind of something similar and different from a community supported agriculture uh, uh, thing. Uh, a gas is a group of buyers. It's a group of uh, people who comes together to buy to some producers, but then they decide from year to year to which producer buy which product. So uh, there is more uh, a consumer point of view uh, which that, okay, we, we want to do an alternatively and collectively, but, um, but then uh, there is not these things of uh, taking care of, uh, of the producer or the production. And this is a model, the GAS, um, it's kind of solidarity uh, group of buyers in a way. And then, um, and then it's a, it's very diffuse model. It's it's a, every city has some of them, and so it, this is one of the main reason uh, community supported agriculture that came quite late uh, in the last in the last year. Arvaya was kind of one of the first one, the second I think, and uh, and I'm talking about another community supported agriculture project, uh, which is called uh, CSA Veneto. And then, uh, and then uh, it was kind of a temporary name. We are not kind of the region. It's the name of the region Veneto, and we are not kind of the a regional uh, a regional network of CSA. We are just uh, uh, we are just one. But uh, but we use that name uh, as a temporary one, and then uh, and then now it's not so temporary. And um, we are smaller. We are smaller, we are 40, 40 from 30 to 40 parts and one party for kind of two, three people. And, uh, and uh, we, we pay one farmer, one farmer, but uh, this, uh, this farmer shares his income with others. Uh, another person, it's me, and, and then there is another guy. Uh, because we, we do other, also other things uh, and, uh, and we share the, 
the working in the field and also the income. Uh, we are not a cooperative, not being a cooperative, we are kind of different from a bureaucratic point of view and also organizational point of view. Um, but then uh, we will see better later. Uh, and firstly, uh, okay, that now this logos is, um, this is for the CSA logo. This is the farm where the CSA produces. This is the norm, it's, it has a name uh, by its own because it was already existing farm. And, and then uh, this one, it's a uh, um, solidarity economy network, uh, which, uh, which uh, includes uh, the CSA and also other, uh, other projects. Uh, and I'm talking about the relationship about this. Uh, it's a little bit complex, but, uh, but we figured out uh, to, to create this kind of mechanism. Now we see why. Uh, this is our area. Our area, it's, uh, it's kind of a more conservative area than, uh, than Bologna. Uh, so it's harder to find people that wants to be inside community projects. And uh, it's more fragmented in a way. We have a medium city and small city very next to one to another. Uh, this is Venezia, Mestre, Mogliano, Preganzol, Treviso. And the fun we produce, it's here. Uh, so it's kind of in the middle and we we have made a reasonment about these three, uh, three these five cities and the idea was uh, to uh, find all the people we needed to be something like uh, uh, to, to start uh, in uh, one city would have take a lot of time and then we we just um, we just decided to produce in one place and then to distribute in five towns. Each town has a hub, and uh, each hub has uh, one as three people, other as ten people in that. Uh, so each uh, small town has its hub, uh, and every hub it's um, it's uh, it's autonomous and have some people who care about the place uh, and the place are kind of association or, or uh, various places in the, in the, um, in the cities uh, which host us. And this is kind of another way of being, uh, building a relationship uh, as we saw before with Arvaya. And um, okay. This is, uh, this is the, the farm. The farm has also a co-housing inside. This is a farm that started in the 80s by Bruno Moro. Bruno Moro is one pioneer of uh, organic farming in Italy. And then uh, he, um, he retired in a way and he still lives in the co-housing and then he passed to Domenico Maffeo, the management of the farm. And so it was a very complex farm. Uh, the, the farm is big, but the, the part it's uh, cultivated, it's almost one hectare. And um, and our structure and uh, decision making process and our um, uh, moment of, uh, um, of finding the budget. It's very similar to Arvaya because uh, we started uh, taking inspiration from them. This is, uh, this is we, this is Domenico, uh, and this is our group that we came to visit Arvaya more um, two or three times. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we talk about them and we, they pass us uh, the know-how, also the way of planning the production and the way of uh, raising the budget, etc. So we are different, but we are kind of similar in a way. And these are some pictures of our communities moments uh, and our assemblies and decision making moments. And yes, there's another one. Okay, and this is the vegetables. <laughs> and we have some covered places and some open ones. 
Okay, now this let me uh, explain better the structure. The structure is that uh, we share the, the, the CSA project shares with the, the uh, district. They share um, they share the bureaucratic stuff in a way that the farm is part of both, and also the association because the district is uh, uh, a network of uh, enterprises. Uh, and also, um, which has a contract and also an association for the cultural parts. And the association is also the way that the people who joins the CSA can be part of the project. And so from a bureaucratic point of view and administrative one, they have something in common uh, with this group. And then there are other groups which are all made by volunteers. There are only one person paid that is kind of split in three. And so other one is just volunteer work. And we have uh, a group of, yes, administration, a group of um, that works, uh, that works uh, on, um, on the communication, that works on um, cultural plans. Uh, a group that works on sociocracy. We are kind of inspired by sociocracy uh, and others. Uh, this one are interesting. This one is kind of was an experimentation to bring into the CSA ancient seeds, replicable seeds. Uh, but then with COVID, we, we stopped that project. And uh, this one is uh, called the Politica del Cibo. It's uh, policies of food. And it's an advocacy, an advocacy group. We talk about administration of the cities to, to just make them uh, to, to do some choices more into, into this, uh, this idea uh, of alternative food and um, local sovereignty of food. Uh, uh, and then the important one is um, the group that wrote all the in and out from an economic point of view, the economic group. And these are all volunteer groups. Okay, this is an experimentation we did. We tried to, to, um, to grow some corn. It was outside the, the, the payment system. We just uh, collected some money more who, who wanted to participate in that and we just planted it. And, uh, and it was kind of an experimentation to go outside just the, um, the vegetable one. And okay, um, the farm is also a didactic farm and social farm, and as also an agritourism, and as uh, it's, it's a very complex uh, situation in a way. And so we have a kindergarten, uh, we have some um, summer activities for children, for adults, uh, we do, did some permaculture courses and uh, they have animals. So they do the work with the donkeys and other kind of things. Several, several uh, activities from didactic to, to community building, etc. And this is hosted in the farm and the farm has just the, um, the part of the field who is managed by the community supported agriculture project. And all the rest of the farm, it's, uh, it stays independent in a way. Uh, but one farmer could not, even see splitted in three, could not uh, manage all of that. And uh, this is one of the reason, the other one is just for experimentation because we like, etc. that the farm started also process of uh, building this, uh, this network, this network of producers and this um, solidarity economic district just to share uh, all these kind of aspects and uh, to open it and uh, make uh, a common for other people to go there and manage and, uh, and work on that. Those are some events. Uh, some of them are made by the CSA, some of them are made by the district, some of them by both. And, um, and we do a lot of cultural events of different, different ways. Uh, some of them also, like this one, including the, space, the places that uh, is hosting us in Mestre, in a way. The hub places. Uh, the hub place usually has a project in them, which is not linked, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good uh, network building we, we do. 
Um, and so, yes, we did also events talking about the food cop and other things. And okay, this is uh, this shows better the um, this show better the the district. Um, those are the the names of the of the farms. They're not just farms. There's producers, but not just producers. There is also uh, this entrepreneurship that uh, it's about the distribution of food, and uh, they joined us. They they didn't start it for us, and uh, we had another community supported agriculture project in uh, in Padova, and another one is uh, starting in uh, Rivera del Brenta, uh, which is not far from our territory, uh, and it's very near, and it's managed by another farm which is in the network. Uh, I know it's kind of complex, so after, otherwise maybe with the question can be can be a little um, easier to explain. And then this is the farm Rio Selva that it's inside as the CSA and then it's Preganziol, Treviso, Venezia, Mogliano and Mestre, the cities where, and the hub where we uh, produce. But, and then we also work with several networks from a local point of view and, uh, and national and international point of view uh also in the solidarity networks but also in the eco villages in the degrowth movements and uh, so on and so on uh, okay and also we have not just uh, food producers but also people that uh, make uh, essential oils and uh, and essences and um, cosmetics and also uh, a guy who makes um, arts and craft uh, production. And those are the products who sold, um, who are sold from the, and are produced in the district. These are the handcraft uh, stuff. And also for, uh, for this, um, we, we had the, the idea for this Christmas to put some vegetable in them and try to sell them with the, 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 the chesta and the vegetable in them and other products and see if people like them. And uh, we do fermented stuff and, um, and, also, and also cereals and also legumes and, um, and of course vegetables and bread also in Rio Selva we do also in the in the, the same farm we do also bread and other and other kind of products. Um, we organize in three main groups, main working groups, and uh, there is the we call them circles. Uh, there is the circle of producer and other entrepreneurs. Uh, we, they talk together and uh, the circle of coordinators and workers and the circle of uh, the executive board of the association. These three main groups, uh, they firstly talk together once a month and then uh, they meet all together in the, in the plenary meeting for the collective decision. Um, this is also very inspired by Socrates and facilitation. And um, and the idea is uh, to build a common fund where to share profits, to share kind of all the profits. Uh, of course, every 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 um, entrepreneurship can decide which aspects to put together and which aspect to to keep independent. Uh, but uh, what is put together is not just uh, to um to to work better but also to create this fund to 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 invest all together to have if somebody has problem for example for a storm the production can can be damaged etc uh, and then we are kind of thinking about these things just to to to, to socially help uh, each other And yes, all, all the single group I nominated before, they just bring proposal, but it's the general assembly that uh, that took uh, the main, that takes the main decision. So we're kind of trying to mix uh, uh, horizontality with the, 
with the uh, with group work and uh, and more focused work uh, with expert etc uh, we share services share uh, exchange labor and uh, also expertise uh, machineries uh, and uh, spaces also and also processing laboratory laboratories laboratories to this to, to this project and okay uh, the the idea is that uh, because the community supported agriculture it's a uh, very uh, few people can enter in that few people are uh, so committed in uh, wanting to be into a community to accept that because a lot of people because they have small children or they work a lot or they i don't know that it's kind of their their own life they, they can't go to the hub uh, every week to take uh, their parts of food, etc. So we are trying, we're thinking that to come in to meet the people who wants to, to change uh, uh, their habits, their elementary habits and to, to work for uh, food autonomy the, of the territory. But uh, we are kind of understanding that uh, everybody starts from this point of view and uh, the starting point is very different. And we want to encourage a thing that uh, in the future, everything will be into the community supported agriculture project, maybe. But uh, um, before that, uh, that future, we still have uh, some markets inside the farms or also uh, around and um, one is uh, no a couple of them are out of uh, pharmacy because the pharmacist uh, told us that yes it's a uh, it's um, a good message to give to our clients that's uh, eating uh, good vegetables uh, it's um, local organic vegetables it's kind of in a way a, a way of taking care of yourself and prevention etc and so there was kind of very illuminated the reasonment from them. And then, um, and then we have uh, delivery door to door who, who also can go to those markets. And the door to door, it's made uh, okay by, by car, but some of them also by cargo bikes. And uh, also in Venice, we use, uh, we use a boat. A boat, uh, um, a non, not mechanical one, just a boat with, uh, and um, and that's a, a way of distribution. We are just improving improving it uh, more and more. Okay, now I have done. Wow! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, I, I figured out how to come out for the sharing you can normally just push stop like, sharing oh, okay okay okay. Wow. Uh, no. okay also a very diverse farm and uh, a lot of different ways to reach the community and to and to uh, deliver the the vegetables interesting mm -hmm. um yes yeah, so in the meantime we got um a message from Maria, who says that she cannot make it back, but that if we have more questions for her, that we can send them, and then she will email the, uh, then she will email her answer back. So if you have more questions, then you can just put them in the in the um, in the message in the chat box, and then we will make sure that you get the answers. Um, yeah. First, are there any more questions for for Francesco? Sorry, my battery was also almost done, but I have a charger, so it's fine. Uh, I can also a little bit answer uh, about Arvaya because we, we we are kind of really connected to them, and also it's a, it's a way to explain better the thing because the decision making process is it's uh, the 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 mechanism of the solidarity she talked about. Um, it was about uh, collecting how to collect the money. Uh, the decision-making process is different. It's just uh, the, the solidarity is in the way that uh, they get uh, all the money that it's okay for the year to buy, to, to, to pay everything in a way. 
but the decision making they explained it she explained it before that they had the, these smaller groups one is bureaucratic one that they have to do for the law italian law and the other one is the real one and uh, she explained that, that, that that's they have this these groups and and we also have this kind of groups we don't have the 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 cooperative one but we just have a group of um, and i forgot to talk about all the groups but not the mo most important one most important one that our decision making group it's a group it's uh, open to everybody who wants to join uh but after a while it's uh, kind of not not not, not much people come inside and yeah. outside but we want to see to yeah. keep open and also the odgs open etc that's and nice. uh, a vote on the crops uh, to grow yes i think yeah they have uh, and we have uh, uh, kind of uh, we make uh, a little survey to the people of course we can't uh, we can't uh, make everybody happy we, we just collect all the information and and uh, and then use them so, nice thank you um and clarine asks how many csas are there more or less in the north of italy so around bologna do you know or even how many more are there now than maybe like five six years ago maybe that's also interesting but it's I I don't know the exact numbers because there is, it's kind of starting a national networks, and uh, yeah. we are inside. Arvaya, of course, is inside of that, uh, and the network is growing. Uh, it's growing in this kind of. So there is a lot of community support agriculture project which are not already in the network. But uh, but it's kind of very evolving situation, and uh, each year, three, four, one new project starts, uh, and wow. more. So we uh, five years ago maybe there was kind of ten, ten or less, and now there are kind of fifty, forty projects. It's uh, they're growing, they're growing very very quick. Nice, that's good to hear at least mm -hmm. yeah um yeah how is this perceived by the different gas projects okay this is uh, uh a tricky question not tricky <laughs> but uh, a deep question in a way because uh it's not easy to ex talk with them because the uh, csa it's kind of perceived something it's, it's something different uh, this difference, uh, it's um, it's hard to explain because you, from our point of view, uh, it's uh, it's more um, how to say it's more um, it's more interesting in the CSA. It's more advanced in the sense of a community project, no? Because the community, it's uh, it's it's producing <laughs> itself. It's not buying the product altogether. The community, it's itself producing. Uh, and the farmer is part of the community and that's the difference so we see that it's they are very very uh it's kind of more advanced but you can say okay now we are known we are more advanced you are old <laughs> and this kind of thing no so we want to create network with them and talk with them and collaborate because also the district is uh, working in this way in a way you know uh, because so other farms are working in this way, so we're kind of managing to keep uh, to keep everything in 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 connection. But um, yes, this is uh, in in the very beginning we have the problem of how to talk to them, etc. And now it's kind of a case situation that it's uh, it's it's different, and also people who wants to join as different needs yeah true it's always good to have different systems i guess for mm -hmm. depending on what people want and what the farmers want because as i understood from your csa and also arvaya so the farmer is paid by the in the case of arvaya by the cooperative and so by the community itself right but then i we in the netherlands we also have one project that's like that which is called Hereburen mm. 
Um, and so I guess it's kind of similar, but maybe I don't I don't know enough about the specifics to kind of see the differences. But then the question of that is always like how how um, yeah how how steady is is this like how secure is the farmer that he's going to stay there, for example, and also how do you choose the farmer, for example, or who who decides on that? Could you say something about this, or is this not a problem or not a yeah uh, i think that's uh, are for this aspect our is very different so i can answer for them also i can answer for us uh us it's uh we we started from uh, an already existing farm so the farmer was already there some community supported mm -hmm. agriculture start with the people that then finds the farmer uh, or uh, some people becomes farmer i know that have some uh, for arvaya some people all became farmer for them and, yeah. and the whole project started for uh, for the pro the community supported agriculture project uh, we uh, existed from before so there is the structure of the the entrepreneur of the farm was already there so that they have this uh that they have uh, and so it's a kind it's a, it's an enterprise that's um they pay people it's just <laughs> it's that there is a normal commercial farm in a way uh from this point of view and then uh, there is the uh, association that uh, lets these people uh, um enter in the process and so there is kind of an accord between them uh, uh and yeah. then no the the the, um, the the farmer it's already decided but then we uh, we try to make all the decision collectively. For example, now we're kind of uh, starting an, another way of sharing uh, the labor because before was one and two, three people, as explained before. There's one one uh, worker legally, and then uh, and then other people are working for the farm. And uh, and so there is uh, the community support agriculture pays one person, uh, and yeah. then this uh, we share. Now we are changing that. So to change that, we uh, before we agree between farmers, uh, and then we make a proposal to the group, and the group has to say yes and to be okay with that. And if they don't like, we change. Because we we are kind of we are not uh, there. There is no uh, things that oblige us to do so, uh, because um, cooperative is different. But for us, it's uh, it's very important to make uh, looks like a cooperative, not being that because as a much cost, and we are smaller, and uh, to us will be too costful to yeah. be a cooperative. And um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, about that, there is one question. Um, so I think we can do three more questions. First, a question by Carla, then Julia has a question, and then Kami. And Carla asks, I know that individual farmers in Italy have a lot of problems to do things individually, such as food labs are really expensive. Do you manage to do everything legally as a cooperative, or are there still some things that, are, that have to be done in the gray zone? So I think this question applies more for Arvaya, since that is a cooperative, so I'm not sure if you can say yeah. something about it, or otherwise we can also send the question yes. to my uh, I think that we can do both, no? Then yeah. send the question and then I can sell it a bit. Okay, the gray zone, there is always a gray zone in Italy, in a way. <laughs> every, every company has a gray zone, <laughs> in a way. Uh, we are not a cooperative. We have uh, this contract, uh, which is kind of uh, an experimentation in Italy. It's kind of new, a contract of network of, uh, of enterprises. And uh, this kind of contract lets, uh, lets us uh, work together, uh, but it's an open, open field of experimentation. So it's really gray because it's not kind of black or not black, etc. Uh, of course, for things like payment, we are kind of half legal, half not in a way, because for payment, if you pay taxes and uh, all the pension money, etc. For all the people, you can't make it with the money we we produce. It's, we we are working on that to increase that, etc. But we will have to ask the people too many too much money. 
And yeah. so, and so we are kind of managed that. But uh, for the working together, we are kind of um, are, we are making it. Uh, it's a little complex. So uh, it's everything legal, but it's new. So there is a law that says that this kind of network uh, network contracts exist and they can do this or that but nobody knows well this law so we are working with the uh, people that uh, it's very expert from a national point of view etc uh, that work in solidarity economy for a long time they are helping us to tell you what we can or cannot do but of course it's a policeman came and says what is that and we have to explain etc mm. so uh, we are kind of opening uh, opening a new thing, but it's, um, yes, it's like this. Yeah, 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 interesting. Um, Julia, do you still have a question or you lowered your hand again? I'm not sure. Yeah, no, it was not really a question. I wanted okay. to reply you um, regarding the question you made before uh, for Arvaya. I'm not really sure about that, but uh, compared to Herren Buren, uh, I know that Herren Buren work in a way that they, a group of people collectively buy the land and hire uh, a yeah. farmer, if I'm correct. Whereas in the case of Arvaya, they have this contract in which they rent the, the land. So the farmers uh, organize themselves to uh, yeah uh, start their farming activities and they are financed by the community. But um, the, um, they don't, the community is coming after the initiative of the farmers in the sense that uh, they, the finance is coming from this provisional financial um, statement that they do at the beginning of the year. Uh, so to ensure the payment to the producers, but um, yeah, they're not, it's not the community, the cooperative that is hiring the, the farmers, but uh, it's uh, the producer, the farmers that are uh, um, engaging in order to find the, the right amount of members in order to finance their activities. In fact, they're mm. very active also in the communication part and they struggle also a bit uh, with the turnover of the members. So even if it's not a major problem they have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's indeed a bit different. I think there are many different structures of CSAs to be had. <laughs> It's interesting to uh, learn about the differences and what they imply, of course, but that's a different conversation also, I think. Um, okay, let's go to uh, Kami's question. Let's end with this one. Uh, do you have the impression that Italian farmers are open to the CSA model? Um, or what are some of the challenges you see in getting a farmer on board? Um, and then okay, the only follows up, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, no, 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 sorry, sorry. And then Leone also followed up on this question, asking if most CSAs are initiated initiated by farmers or by a broader community. So that it, if it's farmers looking for this model or more, if the demand is more from there. They are all linked in a way, you know, this, uh, this question. Okay. Um, so, uh, also in Italy, uh, there are very different, uh, different models of uh, community support agriculture. I see then abroad, uh, the variety is more wide. For example, in the United States, etc., they have more kind of gas and CSA mixed together in uh, strange ways. And so there is very, we, we use an acronym to, to say a very, very huge phenomenon in a way, you know? Um, so uh, some of them, I can tell if most of are in a way most than another, but uh, half and half maybe. Uh, I knew that was uh, there was uh, not easy to find uh, for my community to find uh, a farmer. Not so easy because you have to find uh, the right person who wants to share the decision wants to not have profit we have to remember that all this kind of project can't have profit because uh, they pay the salary but not uh, not more so uh, which is a lot in a way that's uh, for a lot of farmers 
even having a salary which is granted it's very very good but uh, maybe the ideas of okay now if i'm brilliant i can do this i can do that i can make more money which is in kind of culturally into the idea of making a, an employees etc it's um it's um it's not in these things and also you have to uh, invest a lot of time to to talk with people to build a community to answer the, the problems the situation and all the community building uh, the, and also the the conflicts that come out the the and all the things so it's a huge huge work uh, Let's say most of producers that do that, they do for also for uh, for uh, for kind of uh, um, political decision in a way. I, I want to be in a community because I think that that's the future. So um, so that is this kind of reason. In a way, most farmers are not uh, organic farmer, uh, artisanal organic farmer, or uh, kind of uh, uh, production which can be seen as regenerative production, uh, which is not very diffused. So this kind of production, uh, people who are producing this way is most likely to go to a CSA and also CSA is most likely to search for that, that kind of project because uh, it's a, it's a, it's a network of money. No, sorry, it's a, it's a circuit of money which is outside the market. So you can make a very big decision of paying people less, paying people more. Uh, invest maybe to make a food forest for the next 20 years you can make whatever decision the community wants to pay for so that's a kind of make a, a separate uh, thing uh, and that's it's possible to 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 manage very very different the things so it's it's hard in both ways it's hard to find a, a producer that wants to do that but some producers understand the advantage of doing this and, and the context of crisis uh, make a csa look like okay now that that's i kind of say it's it's safe uh it's it's uh, it's um it's make a security in a way you know uh, it's not so secure because uh in the people comes and go and you have con to constantly put people in just to have the same number of people so there is not so much secure for life and then you can be lazy etc no no there is a lot of work to that but then um but it's also hard for a community to to um, from for the producer to go on and building the community it's hard yeah exactly so there are some ben benefits but it's, fun. But it's hard but it's fun <laughs> yeah good lucky <laughs> that's good Thank you. Yeah, it's a different kind of farmer, I guess. Um, okay, I think um, we should end this meeting. But as an ending, I would like um, one special participant to maybe say a few words, because I heard that uh, Guillerme, he used to organize the farmer's deals with Boergroep, if I'm correct. And now he's doing a PhD on CSAs in Italy. Um, so maybe, Guillerme, you want to I don't know what what did you think of these examples and do you recognize things in other CS CSAs in Italy that you saw? Maybe you want to comment as like a last word and thank you so much Francisco for answering all the questions and for the good speech. So Guillermo? Yeah, uh, yeah. Hi Louise and everyone. I was a little bit caught by surprise by this uh, request. <laughs> um, yeah, just to say I'm, I'm here tonight with Leonie, which is my colleague. We are working on a PhD project um, mm -hmm. on community supported agriculture and permaculture initiatives in Italy and trying to understand how they contribute to transitions to sustainability um, by bringing some critiques to capitalism and to the mainstream uh, system and experimenting with alternatives. Um, just to give a little bit of, a, of context. Um, uh, oof, if I have big words uh, or, or uh, <laughs> an, 
no, no, not really. I don't have any any okay. any special uh, <laughs> reflection. I just I just actually find it interesting what Francesco said, and I think it's an interesting phenomenon in Italy. We are still discovering. Leonie and I, we've recently started this PhD. Uh, Leonie can also complement if she wants, <laughs> but I think there's a special um, phenomenon of Arvaya being kind of like the sort of the starter and influ and, and influencing and, and, and pushing other initiatives to grow, um, which, which is special because normally when we talk about these transitions to sustainability, we think of how these initiatives can break into the regime or the mainstream and, and make changes and, and change paradigms and so on. But I think in Italy, we see another example of people really working outside the main system and, and spreading this these ways of, of producing food or collectively organizing from food production to food consumption and waste uh, outside this main um, this mainstream or this conventional system and encouraging other initiatives to also experiment with different uh, practices. Um, so I think that's a very interesting case in Italy and I'm curious to learn more about not only the one in Veneto, but the, also the one in, in Bologna. Uh, I also heard of initiatives in, in, in Siena, in, in, in Rome. Um, so it's, it's yeah, quite motivating and exciting to see how this is flourishing in Italy. Yeah, definitely. This is all. <laughs> yeah, no, looking forward to, uh, to the PhD presentation, I guess. <laughs> Very nice to have you you both here and to meet you. Um, yeah, I think um, I think this was quite a nice end reflection also. And I think we're already a bit over time, so I'm sorry for that. And I'm sorry for all the struggles with the IT and um, yeah, all those kind of things. <laughs> it's always a challenge to do uh, things online. But thank you so much all for coming and uh, thank you so much for your story, Francesco, and for answering the questions and for, yeah, inspiring us to, uh, to learn more about CSAs and to dive deeper into the subject and to become farmers all, I hope. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Okay, I will stop the recording and I will also put it on the uh, website of Boerengroep together with the answers of Maria, if she answers, um, when she answers. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, good night and happy holidays. Uh, no, is Nani klaar? Yeah.